section 1.5, variables and data. All right, so we're gonna define a new term, a variable, and that is a characteristic that varies from one person or thing to another. And in the algebra context, you would often think of a variable as a letter representing an unknown number, and a variable here might represent a number, but it might also represent some other kind of characteristic, like somebody's eye color. So because of that, we say our variables have two types. There's a categorical variable, which is the non-numeric variables. So examples of that would be gender, uh, eye color, like I said a moment ago. Maybe another one might be blood type. So the type of answers you get when you ask people about this vari these variables are not numbers. If they are numbers, we'd refer to them as a quantitative variable, so that's a numerically valued variable. And some examples of that might be height, weight, time. And then one that's a little different, maybe the number of people in a line. And that one's different because the number of people in line could be three people or four people, but it can't be 3.87 people. So we have some numbers that can't possibly be values for that variable, whereas that's a little bit different from time where something could take three seconds or four seconds, but it could also take 3.87 seconds. So because of that kind of difference in those quantitative variables, we say there's two types of quantitative variables as well. There's the discrete, which is the one that has the gaps and the continuous where all those gaps are possible. So let's define those. If two possible values of the variable have numbers that exist between them, but those numbers in between are not possible values of the variable, then we're working with a discrete variable. Um, in more plain language, we could say that gaps exist between the possibilities. So number of wins is like that, number of students in a class is like that number of people in a line that I mentioned up above was like that. A continuous variable would be one where those gaps in between are filled in with possibilities. So on a continuous variable, all numbers between any two possible values of the variable must be possible values of the variable themselves. So there's no gaps between the possibilities when you're dealing with something that's continuous. So time and length are like that where you can get all these decimal values in between like the 3.87 seconds that I mentioned earlier. And then in addition to talking about variables, we also have a definition for data. And data is the information obtained by observing the values of a variable. In looser terms, you could say that when you're talking about the variable, you're thinking about the question that's being asked. And when you think about data, you're thinking about the answers you're getting. So let's try and clarify that a little bit with some examples. So a sample of 100 students were asked what their major is, what is the variable? And the variable isn't exactly the question, but it's what you're asking the question about, and you're asking about their major. So I would say the variable is major. And then give an example of a piece of data for this variable. So all kinds of answers we can get. Maybe a history major might be an example of something somebody would say. And then when you go to classify the variable, you think about the kind of pieces of data you get. Since we're getting answers like history, which is a word rather than a number, that means this is a categorical variable instead of a quantitative one. So a lot of times when you're doing homework or maybe possibly on test questions and so on, they'll just ask you to classify the variable right away. And so you'd still want to think about those first two things. What is the variable and what kind of data are you going to get? So classify the primary language spoken at home. So the variable is language. Somebody might answer English, Spanish, Chinese. So uh, depending on what kind of answer you get, in this case, word answers, you would say this one is categorical. The distance of a javelin throw, so distance is our variable. Piece of data we might get would be things like 100 yards, 
101 yards. We could even get 100.57 yards. That's possible for something like this. So because we're getting numbers, we'd say it's quantitative. And then with quantitative, you always want to go that extra part and say, is it discrete or continuous? And because, as I mentioned a moment ago, that those decimal values are possible, uh, we would say it's quantitative continuous. A person's age, so age is the variable. You ask somebody how old they are, they might say 21, 23, 19. Uh, so that makes it quantitative. And then this is a little controversial sometimes, but we think about are the in-betweens possible? Can somebody be 21.37 years old? And the answer to that question is definitely yes. Uh, people that are 21.37, if you ask them how old they are, they'd probably just say 21. Uh, but the type of variable you have is not about how it's typically reported, it's about what's possible. And since those in-betweens are possible, it's a continuous variable. And I think worth a quick mention that people don't always report their age as a whole number. Uh, certainly we don't do that with babies. If we did, then when somebody had a three-month-old baby and we asked how old it was, they would say zero. But we don't hear that. That would probably sound a little bit weird. And even with somebody who's 21.37 years old, they wouldn't say that if you asked them how old they were. But if we were looking to see who the youngest person ever to, you know, achieve some goal was, and they were both 21, we might break it down further and see which one um, was the younger 21. All right, so one more to finish this off, and that would be shoe sizes in the U.S. So people wear things like 10s and 9s and 8s, and so since the, that's a number, we'd say it's quantitative. And then it gets a little tricky on the second part, because you could wear 9 or you could wear 10, and could you be in between? Yes, you could wear 9.5, but what if you wanted to buy a 9.73? Is that a standard U.S. shoe size? And the answer there is no. So it doesn't make something continuous just because some of the values in between exist. It has to be that every value in between could exist. So even when there's something like the halves, it can still be a discrete variable. So. That's a little bit of a trickier case. Most of the ones that are discrete are whole numbers only, but that's an example of something that even though it has the halves, is still discrete because it doesn't have every possibility in between. All right, that's section 1.5.